Hey everyone, my name is Brendan Finch, and in this video we're going to go over the High School Biology Evolution Standard, HSLS 4.5. We're going to talk a little bit about the standard, we're going to look at a phenomena where students can take what they learn in your classroom about this topic and then apply it to that novel phenomena to make sense of the world, and then we're going to talk about a series of questions that we can use from the InOrbit site that will help you to scaffold students up from showing what they know to making sense of a phenomena. This is a good video for you if you're new to the NGSS and trying to acclimate yourself to these standards, if you're using inner orbit and you're looking to see how we write our questions, or if you're writing your own assessments and you want to figure out how you can scaffold up questions from really simple questions to much more complex questions. All right, so let's dig into the standard first, where we look at HSLS 4.5. So this standard is a high school bio standard where students have to evaluate the evidence supporting claims that changes in environmental conditions may result in increases in the number of individuals of some species, the emergence of new species over time, or the extinction of other species. Bummer. There are three dimensions in the standard. The SEPs, engaging in arguing from evidence, where students evaluate the evidence behind currently accepted explanations or solutions to determine the merits of arguments. There are two elements to the DCI here, so it's adaptation. Students have to understand that changes in the physical environment um, can contribute to you know, either expansion of species, emergence of new ones, or um, decline of others. And then also that species become extinct because they can't survive and reproduce in their altered environment. Um, that is uh, important too. The cross-cutting concept here is cause and effect where students are taking the concept of empirical evidence and using that to differentiate between cause and correlation and making specific claims about causes and effects. So now we're going to dive into the inner orbit site and take a look at one of the phenomena we have for the standard. So the big idea with these standards are that students take what they learn in your classroom and they apply that learning to a novel thing that's happening in the real world. So in this case, we're going to look at this cute little polar bear cub. This phenomenon is all about why is this apex predator struggling to survive? So what we give students are, you know, a basic understanding of the Arctic food web and really just what is happening to the environment of these creatures. So we give them some background knowledge on what polar bears um, like to munch on. We give them some understanding of what's happening to sea ice coverage and also um, estimated polar bear populations um, in the Western Hudson Bay. So these are all actual things from research studies and some global average temperatures because um, that's an important part in all of this. All right, great. So the first type of questions that we like to ask students are called prior knowledge questions. And so what that means is that before that high school HSLS 4.5 standard, we want to evaluate if students have readiness for that standard. So going from high school, we go back to middle school. This first question digs into the HS. LS45 prior knowledge standards, so going back to middle school, to MS LS46. So this is still looking at the adaptation standard, but it's the articulation at the middle school level, so going backwards. So students understand that traits that help species survive will blank in frequency in a population because they will live long enough to survive and reproduce. They should know that those traits will increase over time because those are successful traits. And if students understand that, they're going to have a much better time with all the content at the grade level. And after that, we're going to dive into one of our on grade level knowledge or one dimensional questions. So these questions assess whether students have readiness for on grade level content and going deeper into your questioning to two and three dimensional questions. So the question we'll dig into here is one of our questions that are focused on just the DCI. As I hover over this question on the in orbit site, we can see on the right hand side, there are little pop ups that appear for this standard. The prior knowledge question only had a pop up for the DCI at the middle school level. And now we're looking at questions at the high school level for this standard HSLS 4, 5 and 4, 6. This question asks, what will likely happen to the polar bear population if sea ice continues to decrease in the Arctic? And the answer is that polar bears will continue to decline until they're extinct. So if students understand this question and understand the relationship between what is currently happening, the changing environment that polar bears have to face, and um, if they don't adapt to that thing, um, then they will eventually go extinct. And so that's, let's dive down to our other types of questions. There are two other types of questions that we like to write for these standards, and those are two-dimensional questions and then three-dimensional questions. So this question right here is tied to the DCI and the cross-cutting concept only. We want to see if students can apply their understanding of adaptation to cause and effect. So this question asks, which statement accurately illustrates a cause and effect relationship based on the figures above? 
So students should understand that warmer temperatures due to climate change are causing an increase in sea ice melting. And so all we want to do is tie the cause of warmer temperatures to the increase in sea ice melting, the cause and effect there. We have another type of two-dimensional question that we use on our site, and this one will focus on the DCI and the SCP together. So in this case, we want students to evaluate a statement. They we want them to engage and argue from evidence. So we give them a question that says, figure three shows the changes in average global temperatures over the years. Evaluate whether or not this data is reliable evidence for global climate change. So we want students to say, yes, it's reliable evidence because five different sources of temperature data are extremely close in their measurements. The trend lines of all of those sources of measurements are between similar and the same. So in this case, we can say that that's reliable because we're not just pulling from one source, we're pulling from many sources. And now we'll dive into our last question type. These are three-dimensional questions. We call them summative right now, but they are integrating the SCP, the DCI, and the cross-cutting concept all together. So first we'll dive into a multiple choice question that is hitting the three dimensions of this HSLS 405 standard. So students are integrating their they're engaging art from evidence SCP, the DCI adaptation, and the cross cutting concept of cause and effect. So this question asks, Chris shows you the graphs in figures two and three and claims that polar bears are dying because it's too hot. Chris's classmates evaluate his claims and evidence. Which students provides the best evaluation? So students have to choose that both Sam and Javier um, are evaluating this argument most accurately, um, where we're looking at seeing the difference between causation versus correlation by comparing these different arguments. And then finally, we'll get into one of our three-dimensional free response questions. So these questions ask students to compose a response to a prompt, and then teachers are able to grade them on their DCI, their SEP, and the cross-cutting concepts. You pull evidence from what the students write down and say, you understand the DCI, you're struggling with the SCP, but you nailed it on the cross-cutting concept. So in this case, we ask students while studying this phenomena, a class rate of yours argues that because populations fluctuate naturally, the observed changes in the polar bear population aren't related to climate change. How would you respond to this argument? Use all three figures as evidence to support your claim. So students have to take their understanding of engaging armor from evidence. They have to understand cause and effect and show that in their answer. And they need to explain how adaptation and either extinction or changing environments can impact populations of uh, organisms, namely these apex predator polar bears. So that's it. Thank you very much for walking through this biology phenomena with me. If you'd like to learn more about in orbit and try some of your assessments in your classroom, please click on the link in the description. And I hope this was a helpful way for you to dive into one of our assessments and have a beautiful rest of your day.